think. Get done. Hey, bitches, welcome back. Since we last spoke, I've got Windows 95, 98, 3.1, and Fast Tracker 2 running on my Vita. I'm going to show you how and then ramble like a lunatic for a little while. As always, I will include all you need to have a go yourself in the description and my own project files and samples too, with a little help from my girl Rachel over at Eleven Labs. Before we start, I will add the preamble that this is unbelievably impractical, even more so than the piggy tracker business, which in comparison is like a German sports car. Windows 95 runs like absolute dog shit, I'm still not sure if 98 is actually working or not, 3.1 is just a bit useless, and Fast Tracker desperately needs a keyboard. Nonetheless, it's pretty fucking cool that this even works to begin with. I don't know about that one, Chief. And with some tweaking along the way, I think we should be able to produce a cool little jungle loop directly out of Windows on a PS Vita. This became vastly more difficult than I imagined it would be and slowly turned into an Odyssey-esque epic filled with intrigue, mystery, and lunacy. Everybody strap in and strap on for another sex shop captain's log. As always, some history. I spent an ungodly amount of time on my favorite website, the Internet Archive, and with some serious digging, came up with a few forum posts to get the ball rolling. Unfortunately, the first one is in Japanese, and I do not speak Japanese, despite the Weibo allegations. In spite of this guy's YouTube video claiming he had a post on here containing everything I would need, using Google's Translate function yielded no results, so I gave up and went looking elsewhere. Next, I stumbled onto this video. Again, there were links in their description, but being that the video was posted when Mega Upload still existed, all the files are long gone. Looking at the recommended videos and other poorly filmed flip phone videos of the same thing, I got a decent idea of what was going on, but still was no closer to the coveted disk image file. A recurring theme emerged as I found link after link, claiming to have what I was after, but uploaded 15 years ago and no longer hosted. Classic. So I went looking for alternatives and put the Windows 95 install on the back burner, hoping to at least get somewhere with installing Fast Tracker. Luckily, some other newer dude had decided to run DOSBox on his PSP to play FX Fighters. For some reason, although who am I to judge? So I began the arduous process of figuring out how the fuck DOSBox worked on a PSP. Once I got to grips with that, I installed everything onto my adrenaline emulator inside my Vita and booted the thing up. Faced with this impossible interface and ridiculous key bindings, I finally managed to load into Fast Tracker 2. This is where we leave Fast Tracker for a little while, as I really wanted to get Windows 95 running before I attempted anything in FT. If that disappoints you, I will timestamp the FT2 stuff and leave a comment for you to skip through the Windows bit, but I wouldn't recommend it as they are sort of intertwined. Returning to the hunt for Windows 95, I decided to dig a little deeper and see if anyone else had been attempting this a slightly different way. Instead of booting 95 from DOSBox, I figured someone might have packaged the image file with a config that would boot directly into Windows from the PSP home screen, and a brief moment of relief someone had, quickly shattered by the fact that all the download links were, once again, no longer hosted. I am a big believer in being yourself. I knew this was still possible because, well, I've seen it done. But exactly how was still a mystery. The box project for PSP seems really promising, with DOS, Linux, and Windows versions all running on the PSP. Created by Matan Gilan, this project ports the open source x86 emulator box and enables you to run Windows or Linux. I even stumbled onto an old forum where people had been attempting to get XP running, but had long been abandoned, as per usual. And unfortunately, was also supposedly an imitation XP, basically a GUI for DOS that looked like XP, but wasn't. This was due to the PSP's ARM CPU, for which there is no XP version that can be used, as a result, I'm inclined to believe their claims. Yeah, keep it up, assholes, because guess what? One day I'm going to get laid by the hottest of age goth chick that's biologically female. And it's going to be consensual and she'll be alive. And on top of that, y'all are going to be jealous as fuck because I ain't going to say shit about it. Because quite frankly, that's none of your business. A gentleman doesn't kiss and tell. Also, someone has mentioned in this thread that there are ARM versions of Windows 10. So, I mean, if that's real, I got another video for you right there. Windows 10 PSP? But I digress. Gillen programmed the 95 interface to fit the 480x272 screen of the PSP using rescaling, which is great and all, 
but it requires a lot of CPU power and slows it down immensely. Also binding the joystick to the mouse and enabling Windows Virtual Keyboard using the PSP's D-pad and other buttons. He also uses the overclocking feature of the PSP to make it all run at 333 MHz, but, and I quote, Nobody knows how this affects the PSP, also the virtual machine sometimes writes a lot of data to the flash memory stick, which could shorten its life. This put me off a little bit, I won't lie. He closes it out by saying, bottom line, if your PSP starts bursting into flames after running this, don't blame me. So I decided I wouldn't use that. But that got me thinking, because I am emulating the PSP inside of Vita to do all of this, with more modern memory, drive speeds, and CPU, maybe I didn't need to go through all of this in the first place. Shad Nepal, Sama give it to, Sama give it to, Sama give it to, to our gears. 5 million and 40 naughty shorty! So going back onto the modern net, I went looking for a video of someone running 95 in DOSBox on a PC. And result. A great success! There was a shitload of people doing this. Even more lucky was that most of these videos included both an image file and a batch file to make 95 run inside DOSBox without the need for writing a boatload of code inside the Vita, which would take literal days. I used this video of someone doing the same thing as me inside a browser. I figured that this would be closer to using a Vita than directly doing it inside Windows, I'm probably wrong about that. But hey, who really gives a shit? I also found a video of this, like a 14-year-old kid running 95 in DOSBox, which I want to show you just because, like, damn, get it girly pop. Hello guys, Ian here, and today I'm going to show you how to run Windows 95 in DOSBox. So, I shoved these files into my DOSBox directory on the Vita and ran them, and it looked like a miserable failure. So I waited a while longer, and then, it lives! It's alive! Really felt like Dr. Frankenstein here, and then it died again. I kept waiting, and waiting, and waiting. And 15 minutes later, it booted up. But it looked like this, so I closed it all down and tried again. And after yet another excruciating wait, it booted up properly. I set the clocks and was faced with the classic Windows 95 home screen. Yet once I tried to actually do anything in Windows, it was painfully slow and crashes constantly. I mean, it works, but it isn't what I wanted. I know it is possible, and it does evidently work, but I want efficiency, I want performance, I want a genuine Windows PSP, and this, unfortunately, is not that. So, back to the drawing board. If you hadn't noticed, there has been a tense change here, and that's because I am now writing the script as I go along and also making the video as I go along too. I guess that's kind of cooler. I don't know, but it's no longer history. Now it is the present. Whoa, man. Drop down. Snap. So, I stumbled onto a version of Windows 95 in yet another YouTube video, known as Windows 95 d Lite. Apparently, this version removes a lot of the crap that might have been causing my performance issues, and also packages a load of drivers that were necessary for Win95 to run properly. I do not know if this will help or hurt my poor Vita, but at this point I'm willing to try. I have no idea if this is going to work, as I don't actually know what the hell I am doing, but let's give it a go. It didn't. Obviously, as with the previous attempt, I'm going to need an auto-exec that will boot into this godforsaken OS from DOSBox. I don't know how to do that, so I'm going to copy and paste that other one and replace the file names. I guess it should work. It absolutely did not work. Same error message. Now I'm going to try renaming the image file and using the original auto-exec. Okay, so that just does not work at all. I give up. For the sake of this YouTube video, I am going to risk it all and run this box port and see if that can do anything for me here. I suppose with the updated hardware and flash memory speeds of the Vita, maybe it won't explode like Gillon warned me it would. Only one way to find out. A nice man named Pierre Louis has uploaded a repository of a box install, and I'm going to use it, in the hopes that his superior knowledge can circumvent my uselessness. Unfortunately, I keep getting met with this screen. Maybe one of you guys knows what's going on here, but I don't if you do leave a comment. So that was all rather disappointing, but I need a video here. I've spent too long on this not to get something out of it. Next, I went to go and try the method from this YouTube video. He mentions that this was done with something called DOSBox, DBS, made by a uh, Gabby underscore 64. So now we're going to hunt for the mysterious Gabby underscore 64. In the hopes this proves fruitful in my quest for efficient windows, 95 on PSP. The only traces of them I could find were 
I really do not want to click this link, and the hover option suggests it is a site for those into hairy girls sex, I'm wanting more. and other more explicit titles. Not really what we were after. Also definitely nothing to do with Gabby underscore 64, just thought it was a bit funny. I'm a tranny, moo. And this, which is a tool for cracking WPA and WPS Wi-Fi keys. I cannot for the life of me find who this Gabby person is, but I figure there is an interesting trail in there somewhere. We will get to that soon because it was quite fun. However, I don't want to dive into either of these rather illegal topics any further right this second. And finally, this GitHub page, which includes a download link for the DBS file, which has a boot menu allowing us to boot into Windows 3.1, 95, 98, and apparently Windows XP, but I'm pretty sure this is the aforementioned failed attempt, as the forum linked suggests this project was cancelled in 2008. Also credited Gabby underscore 64 as the co-author, along with Crazy C. Gracie. It also supposedly solves our performance issue, quoting the poor speed of Box and that you can also boot Windows 95 in two and a half minutes. Useful if you only want Windows and quickly, and that's important, since P-Sprint sucks. Incredibly disappointing that, despite finding exactly what I needed, the file has zero seeders. You got hemorrhoids and your ass is itchy. So you can't download it. Fortunately, mi amigos, I took GCSE Spanish. Tranquilo, se no se preocupe, ya se lo pongo. Ya se lo pongo. Qué pena, patrón. Eso. Ahora sí. And finding this forum here seemed to have some form of the same thing uploaded to it, at least it credited C in it, so it must be somewhat the same. So I made an account and downloaded the files. The folder name seemed highly promising. Yet again, this does not work. I cannot get past the incredibly promising front screen. This Reddit user suggests they have done the same thing as me, but evidently with better knowledge around how this all works and compiled what is needed to do this all into a folder. I really hope it does, because I am ready to completely give up with this. Seriously, I'm going insane. However, one of the other forums where this DBS was originally posted actually gave away Gabby underscore 64's email address. A total shot in the dark, but I have sent an email to them in the hopes that they still use this address. Unlikely, but maybe we will get something here. In the meantime, I'm going to keep trying anyway. So taking the Spanish DBS front end section, the Win95 image, and this section from the Spanish config file and adding it to the recompile by the Reddit user. I then added a Windows 3.1, Windows 95, and Windows 98 IMG file. Found this video on YouTube of someone using it and this comment about how to input the correct commands. Booted it up, and then I prayed that my suffering may soon be over. Luckily for me it was. But not because I made it work, I didn't. In fact, I am just a bit of a knobhead. Someone had actually linked the whole thing in the description of one of the videos I watched and I had missed it. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Sorry to lead you on like that, but this is genuinely how it all went down. Nine hours straight of caffeine, hunting, and one incredibly embarrassing YouTube comment, all wiped away in a second by Mr. Fast Com Shot. Jesus Christ. What a beg. So I installed this guy's link then, as if by magic. It worked! It actually worked! My quest was finally over. As a caveat, to boot into Windows 3.1, I had to type win after loading the OS in DOSBox. Someone mentioned this in the original forum. Again, I did not see this until two hours after I had begun attempting to make it boot. I am creating a repack, which is on my GitHub, with a modified DBS that will do this for you. Not sure when it'll be finished, but keep an eye out. And now, instead of Windows 95 alone, I had Windows 95 and Windows 3.1 all bootable from my PS Vita, now with 50% faster boot speed. How useful. But I still did not have Windows 98 because this guy's page still didn't have that. It also turned out that they were using something called 98 Lite to circumvent the fact that the real Windows 98 did not run on the original DOS box. That would have saved me a lot of time. Unfortunately, this being the only link to get this damn image file, I had to find my own. Dirt! Insane! Lesbian! Gay woman. So I tracked down a copy of 98 Lite and created my own bootable IMG file. This was pretty rough, but I will link some stuff for you to figure it out yourself so this video doesn't end up any longer. 98 Lite also has a free version that is completely capable and has basically no limits to its functionality, which is definitely good enough if you would prefer. 
So my final job now was to optimize this for the Vita. Unfortunately, you can't make Adrenaline use your Vita hardware, as it needs to emulate PSP clock and memory speeds, which limits these OSs to 333MHZ, just like the PSP. Either way, Gabby underscore 64 listed some to-dos inside the config file for this version of DBS, and because it got cancelled, I imagine they never got done. But then, as if by magic, I got an email. From none other than Gabby underscore 64 himself. I couldn't believe my eyes to be honest. It turned out that one, Gabby underscore 64 was a very nice person, and two had all their DBS files still lurking on a hard drive somewhere for me to have. Unfortunately, due to a massive corruption issue a while back, this was an earlier version than the one I already had. However, I think for the purposes of updating and fixing some of the issues in DBS, this will be very useful. The version I am using does not have a functioning software game loader for the DOS box, whereas the version Gabby sent me does. So I will post both of them and hope someone can figure this out for me because I have tried and I have failed one too many times now. I guess the one lesson I learned throughout this whole endeavor is patience. Because if I wasn't so fucking feverish with my hunt, I would have saved both me and you a lot of time. But hey, where would the fun be in that? Either way, thank you so much, Gabby. It was really cool to speak to the man behind all of this, and I did definitely feel a sense of discovery and childlike wonderment over this ordeal. So much so, in fact, that when I went out partying that very weekend, I proceeded to chew every single person who I, unfortunately, came into contact with, ears off about this whole thing, at 10 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Fortunately, most of them were French, so they probably couldn't understand a goddamn word I said anyway. But I was definitely not making any friends in the process. I mean, Christ, imagine if at 10 a.m. absolutely ruined, you can't escape some weirdo banging on about a PSP Windows port and an old C++ coder from 2007. Gives me the fear. Oh well, I had fun anyway. So quickly back to Fast Tracker. This really does not require much discussion. It is super easy to install and run. Just download the newest version of DOSBox for PSP, which has a handy GUI too. Then go into the PSP directory, go to the DOSBox folder, no T your Windows DOSBox, drag and drop the Fast Tracker 2X in there, and boot up the DOSBox. Once you are met with this screen, double click it, and boom, you're in FT. Once inside here, it will work like any other instance of Fast Tracker. To save and load projects, create a folder for them inside the DOSBox directory. Do the same for samples and anything else you would need. After all of that insanity around Windows, I simply do not have the persistence to actually create a track for this video. I'm spent. To conclude, do not try this. There is no point. It will send you into a spiral you may never recover from. Learn from my mistakes. If you have anything you want to see, let me know. Otherwise, I will find some cool shit to talk about and return very soon. Either way, thank you for all the love so far and peace out, bitches.